So I guess we started looking for a studio at the beginning of 2015. Our last album had been out for uh, almost a year and we knew it was time for a new product. We had a new lineup in the band, new songs, new music, and all that was left was finding a recording studio. And uh, it, we had looked around for about a month. It was, a, it was February actually, it was a Valentine's Day, and we played a show at the Moon Tower in Austin, Texas with Vallejo. And uh, that was the first time we got to meet Omar Vallejo. He and our bassist at the time, B.B. Lee, got to chatting and he was like, Hey man, I got this great studio, you guys gotta come check it out. And this is that story. Here at the 512 Studios, we've been collecting gear as any studio or, or that you've been around. And um, oh, let me show you. See this thing right here? This is our vocal chain, which is not on right now. But this is our vocal chain, and it makes the vocals sound so good. And of course, this is a bass chain. And we come here. This is our guitar thing. We're using a lot of SSL style of state logic stuff. We have this Otari board here. That's you know. It's been around. I met people. I met Elvis Costello. Actually, recorded on it, and um, uh, Archangels, Bob Snyder, um, a bunch of great Austin acts have done it. Chris Castanetis. So the board's sort of oozing of just great talent and that uh, Austin history. So, and it's very warm. And that's what we try to do is just try to keep that natural tone. Because I met a lot of people, especially with all the equipment you have out there. Everything's real digital and processed. We try not to do that. So. Hopefully when you hear the record, it doesn't sound processed. It's, it's um, all the fingers and toes and mouths and lips that these guys have onto tape. So, hope you enjoy it. Is this thing on? So we went into the studio that Sunday after about eight gigs that week, and that first night really kind of set the tone for the whole week. Omar and Kevin showed us right off the bat how efficient they were and how professional they were, but they kept this really energetic and fun tone the whole time we were working with them. So we knew that first night that we were working in a very special place. With all these dollars in my hand and I'm making waves. Only sound can understand I'm not a loss, so I just realized that I have no control of where we go. Or where the wind blows, brighter than all my stars, it's a little cold tonight. Yeah, for me, like, the first thing I thought about was probably like, when you roll up to the studio, it doesn't really look like it's anything crazy. It's a very unassuming building. It's like, it's in just a good enough part of town, but just on that outskirt where you're like, things kind of shift a little bit. You start seeing different kinds of buildings. It's a little more warehouse-y looking from the outside, honestly, than you'd expect. It looks like a small little like industrial warehouse like you might see an auto body shop in it or something. And it has like a nice sign, kind of Vegas-y looking. You walk in and you go open the front door and it's just gorgeous, just like wood paneling and just really well painted and thought out. And like there's a pinball machine and TVs and couches and then and then you actually step into the back where all the equipment is and it's a fucking play place. It's just beautiful.
beautiful musical instruments on every corner of the room. I won't be back. I'm stuck to the microphone. <laughs> Maybe I should step around instead of step over. Now that we had the scratch tracks, we could go in and write out a game plan for the album. Day two is dedicated to the drums and the bass. We really wanted to have a fresh and diverse sound on this album, so we decided to use multiple musicians. This first hitch just kick five. Guys, as open as possible. Kind of suspends you in time there for a second. It was cool. This time we got to use three drummers. Cody, Kevin Abenante, and the notorious D.O.G. <laughs> we used two bassists, Omar and BB Lee. <laughs> Omar won Best Bassist of 2014 in Austin, Texas, so we were excited to get the chance to work with him. Have you got a, like a, a big fill into someone? How about like a... They're about boo, 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 do da do do going into the solo. Going into the solo. Try, try doing that little thing. Start from the same spot with that, that fill coming into the solo. It's like a laid back fill, but yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. Ah, damn it. Me and Kevin been working together for, um, I didn't know it was this long. I thought it was like six, seven months. But he reminded me the other day that um, we've been working together for six or seven years. And I was like, well, if I think back on it, you know, I, I've said God damn it, Kevin, probably about 1,028 times. So <laughs> <laughs> break that into like four or five times a week, you know, then you have, um, then you have the, uh, the, uh, the, the time that we've spent together and, He's my right hand man. I uh, couldn't do it without him, and and we bounce off each other really good. As far as drums and rhythmic stuff, I mean, the guy's a genius. And he actually went to school to learn how to record. I mean, I just did it. I learned everything from just doing it for 30 years. You know what I mean? Uh, sort of the school of hard knocks, or whatever. But he has a lot of points to where he's like, this is how this this goes. And especially nowadays, technology changes every fucking month. So you have to sort of go with the times and of course I, I'm not in school because I'm busy recording folks like you guys so I don't catch up on all the technical aspects but, but it's good to have him and when you need a shoulder to cry on. <laughs> Catching all this acid rain that drops on my tongue and it makes me sad. I think I kinda like the taste of where the wind blows. Where the wind blows.
the top and we'll, we should be done with this one and we'll start doing percussion. If you want to start putting your percussion, all, we'll do all percussion out here. Cool. How long have you had the cajon? How long have I had the cajon? I got it like the week before we went to the studio or two, right? Like, on my birthday, July 1st, July, so it was a month before the studio. I had the cajon since July, so July, August, September, four months now. Like that. How's it different than a drum set? It's not a drum set. <laughs> it's just one thing compared to up to many things. It's a uh, coordination's a little different. Everything's really close and local, as opposed to with sticks where I reach on drums. Everything's just right here in the palm of my hands. But it uh, obviously has its limitations in that same sense. It's one instrument, so it has one kind of sound to it. So you got to get creative to get different tones out of it, hit it different ways different things. Sometimes I wear gloves while I play so I don't screw up my hands, but it also gets a little muffled kind of sound, you know, little things like that. All those years of ass smacking. Set a beat to that. Oh, oh. Cool. That's what you. Yeah. Alright, All right, here we go. Uh, keep on doing what you've yeah, been yeah, doing. Yeah. Kick drum again. Yeah. Dude, it sounds like a hip hop album. It's awesome. <laughs> it's like jungle beats going on, man. We done. We done. <laughs> Yes, sir. <laughs> well done. So what is the hardest part to you of the recording process? Well, to me, it depends on who you're recording. I mean, uh, some bands you record, you know, it, everything goes very smoothly, as we did with you guys, and everybody saw the saw the vision, and we went there with it. But a lot of times, people come in here unprepared, and people that are unprepared really sort of hurt me, because it's like. It's your baby. I can only burp it. You have to come in prepared, and, you, and if you don't, then you're just missing the boat. And um, I guess the hardest part about doing a band record is when they're gone. You sort of miss the smell and the, the vibe of the band, and then they're gone, and then you just gotta sort of just reminisce. <laughs> you gotta call them. You gotta call him at two in the morning and go, where are you guys at? <laughs> what are y'all doing? I like working with Omar because he kind of is really good about teaching you what he's doing throughout the process. Like I had a lot of questions I just wanted to learn while we were in the studio and uh, he was really good about you know, explaining the process as he was going along. It's something I appreciate about his, uh, or working with him and him being a producer. 
Knock, knock. <laughs> Who is it? <laughs> Play, play, play with confidence. Like, oh. Eagle-ish, but not... Get, get the power stance. That's what I, I keep saying. That's <laughs> <laughs> the fuck is going on? Play a little hard. Gotcha. <laughs> chunka, chunka, chunka. Yeah, match, match what she did. That's power stance in it. Uh, <laughs> too much power stance. Okay, what you, what okay, so by the back H's back. who? You got in your uh, can't catch the dragon. Quote of the day or whatever. I'm the, I'm the master. You know you never catch the dragon. Right? I'm the master <laughs> of disaster. Quote that bitch. <laughs> This is the, you know, the football thing we we're talking about. We're gonna do, we should do some footballs here. Footballs are two tracks, and they're the dumbest shit. It's the dumbest track I've ever played, but it's a, <coughs> I call it a blanket track. And you just go, and you don't play the chord, you're gonna play the power chord. And two, just two strings. Just let it ring. No, no, just no, two no. strings. Yeah, not the full, not the full three. Two string chords.
giving out girl frogs. for the day like when, when either it's like tapping out or you know I mean, when they've had enough well man of course I mean we experienced it everybody experiences it especially after like three or four days in the studio your brain can only take so much you know abuse and which being in the studio is a wonderful thing but you have to be on your game brain wise because once your brain hits that certain point it just gets to where you're, you're wasting time mm -hmm. I'm gonna start you right before. I think I think it's too much time. Yeah, I'm gonna start it. So you're gonna jump in right here. I think it's too much time, and you got too much time to think about it. So here we go. Just use it. Just use it. Thing right here. Just start it here. Okay, what do we do? What do, we do? How do we make this? You gotta want to do it, and you, you can sort of feel it in people's voice or hear it in their voice and feel the vibe that people have, and it's like you know when it's time. Right. Uh, we, we did. I think we went there once because everybody was hungry and I think needed a drink. But other than that, uh, you know when it happens. You know when it happens. You can feel the vibe. We just hey, good job. I think today I'm just pretty burnt. Strong, so. I'm pretty burnt. I think everybody's burnt. So I think we should. This is a great time to stop, so we don't get burnt. We got plenty of time to do it tomorrow with vocals and this and that. Mañana. 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 Tomorrow. <laughs> Texas KGB. Hey, studio my first impression when I walked in was pretty much like yeah this is a place that I can make an album <laughs> it's kind of has that special feeling when you first walk in it has these nice bright yellow walls and just like a good vibe you can tell a lot of people have a, have really good mindsets going in there because the, the energy in the room is really good <laughs>
I'd say one more. I mean, I, I think that was it. But... Being an award-winning producer, does that change how you approach making an album? Not just ours, but any album. Okay, that's now, a good now, question. You know, now that you're cream of the crop. Well, um, well, popularity is, is is a you know is a is a two-way street. It's like what's popular, what's good. What's good to me is what's what's actually normal and natural. You know, um, un unnatural is trying too hard and that's what I try to do when I produce bands it's like you don't want to push anything that you know makes anybody feel uncomfortable at the time when you're doing it you just want to just let things be and then grab that be and sort of try to massage it to where it come, becomes great Being a producer is probably the easiest job in the world. You let everybody else do what they do, and you just sort of coerce it into being great somehow with uh, what you know. So man, it's a two-way street. It takes musicians that know what they're doing, and it takes somebody else that sort of been there, done that kind of thing, and, and just get the polishing rag out and have fun with it. Sandwiches all night long. 
Hey, and uh, the second verse, one of the lines that's especially starting to get a little pitchy, uh, the isn't wrong about who's wrong or who's right. So focus on that one a good bit, too. Here we go. I will come and eat. Okay. That, that's for the tape. We got the tape? Yeah, we're ready. Oh. What's that little oh, green oh, sliver there, you think, yo? Like oh, God. I swear that never happens. <laughs> yeah, I agree. To lose all control like a shot from a girl Racing out to Mars that's, that's felt good. Yeah, I won't go any... That's that's what I felt was a good about a good limit. Well, it's a little cool for a summer night A million stars in this mountain sky And the moon's so bright up here can I, Cody, can I have the book with the lyrics in it? Kelly needs this. I must go to you. This is my Liz Lemon. It's pretty spot on. Yeah, right? All right, can we try this one? Dashing through the snow in a one-horse open sleigh Over the fields we go, laughing all the way Ha ha, bells on bobtails ring, making spirits bright What fun it is to ride and sing a slaying song tonight Whoa, jingle bells, jingle Are we not doing that right now? I thought we were all going to sing along Use that on the way. We're gonna kick that. Okay, we have a problem, Houston. Nothing. Oh, this is unplugged. Yeah. Hey! Hey! Literally right in front of my face. Yeah. It's so weird. Like head banging helps me or something. Like I'm about to like shake my head to do this yeah. fucking song. <laughs>
There's stuff I liked about that one, but there's also stuff I hated about that one. Elementary, yeah. Well, I was just saying, like, as far as on the metronome. Gotcha. So no, okay, not, don't ahead. push it. Yeah. Here we go. But the strength is fine? Yeah. Okay, cool. something and by producing or being in a band or being a songwriter you know when you when you're writing a song you're sitting there listening and you're writing parts and the only thing that sort of tells you where to go or where you want to go is your ear mm -hmm. and when you know you're, you're hearing something and it feels especially where your vocals follow when the music doesn't follow the vocal your ear sort of tends to pull you that way he's singing baby in the key of C when, when we hit that note, that one, baby, baby. Don't beat him, join him. Baby, baby. And it'll make that section a little more interesting. That, that, are you pressing mm -hmm. that? Yeah, that baby, baby, yeah. That one baby is on a C, so if you play it with him, it'll... It, first baby or second baby? First baby. It's a first baby. First, and the second baby. And that second baby's on G. Not my kid is the second one. <laughs> it's not my <laughs> kid. <laughs> <laughs> I never try to say anything or never try to change shit just because, hey, I've got to do something. Right, i got to put my touch on this. Yes, I, I, I try not to stay away from messing up anybody's songwriting, you know, or messing with a baby that they, they wrote and whatnot, or because it's, it's everybody, and I, that's one thing being a musician and writing 10, 11 records is like, the last thing you want to hear is somebody going, hey, that's, uh, I think we should do this with your, with your baby, you know what I'm saying? No. You know what I mean, but if it makes sense and and it makes better for the whole project and and it goes to a good place. At the end of the day, if, if you're like, you know what, I don't like that part. All we do is get the one for the second day. Yeah. Yep. So we always have cleanup. Make sure you tell him that just in case he's so conscious about it. Yeah. I mean, because later on you might be like, hey man, you know that, that part really really fucking sucks. You know? <laughs> Thanks a lot. He okay, might be a little apprehensive just because it's changing something, but it's a good change. I think it's good. Yeah. Well, now he's got to convince me. Start and then bring the growl in. That might be... Like the sun is going like that versus being like, Rising like the sun when the morning comes. No, 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 no. Ra, ra, ra. Then ra, ra, ra. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, ra, ra, ra. Exactly. Ra, ra, ra. <laughs> hey, ra, ra. <laughs> Lion's oh, quiet when he sneaks up on you, then he starts to growl. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. Rising like the sun when the morning comes. I get up to get God's work done. Quoting scripture with a serpent's tongue to save your soul. You can switch between the sound and my <laughs> Good thing I'm in like a glass case of emotion. Help! Milk was a bad choice. Vengeance is mine, so say the Lord have you more faith than the soul can afford as the darkness surrounds to the weight of thorns and it's going under, going under, drowning in my love.
did a good job capturing your live sound? I think you did a fantastic job. I think we're very we're very hard to capture at that because we are a live band and in the essence of making an album to quote Cody, you try to make the best representation of the song and put in that songs can lose feeling with too much nonsense on top of it. You know, if you put an orchestra behind a song that doesn't really need it just to do it, it sometimes works out, sometimes you get November rain, sometimes you don't, you know. And this, doesn't always work with stuff, and if you if you're trying to make it you know make it fit by forcing it, it won't. It usually doesn't work out. And just to the detriment of the song or the artist. And I think that's there's a delicate balance for producers and engineers and the artists themselves to try to work together to create that. And when in our in our case we did, I think Omar, and Kevin are both just amazing guys, and because they also play, I think they understand that side of the production, and how hard it can be to have your song dissected and, and really broke down into those parts where you're looking at it and you realize maybe you aren't as prepared as you thought you were because you can sing a song a thousand times it doesn't mean it's not going to change by the time you get to the studio when you're in there hearing things and you got to be able to as the artist allow that song to be able to, to change if it needs to you know like i said that, that's the that's the fine line finding that balance between all the parts and getting everyone to be cohesive in the end to, to make a product that's going to make everyone really happy not just in the group but other people who you know don't know what it's like to make it out to really put yourself out there like that I wrote Time is the Crime about a blues musician from Atlanta, Georgia named Donnie McCormick. And I think he was actually born in Texas, but uh, I met him whenever I was a young child. He was really good friends with my dad and they played in a band together. And I remember being so impressed and just absolutely blown away by his musicianship and his performance on stage and really just the, the person and character he had. It, w it was something, uh, something to be reckoned with, that's for sure. He, uh, could make music on rocks, it was really beautiful. But he died a few years ago, and we really wanted his spirit to live on. And we thought the best way to do that would be through music, because that was his life, was music. So the beginning of Time is the Crime, we put like a little, uh, I don't know if you call it an interlude or what, but it's a uh, him singing uh, Try a Little Harder at a 20 year reunion. And uh, we loved it. It was beautiful as it's it kind of the essence of Donnie. So we decided to put that at the beginning of Time is the Crime. And I, I really like the way it turned out. So I hope people, you know, are inspired to go check him out and uh, see what he was really all about. Ah, 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 ah. The 
this song. How do you use this technology? What what yes. exactly is this? Right? Oh, like, you know what? You can shave your arms with it. Uh, like, talk on it. You can you can even put a rubber band and put it on your. It could be a, a flip-flop. Flip flop, so yeah. that's, that must be it. Flip flop. You can ski with it, yeah. like one arm skiing. I don't know what is this used for nowadays. I don't know. Anybody? There's not a musician. What is this? <laughs> Thanks, BB. <laughs>
Escapes rolling out across this rocking plane it melts my face. Catching all this acid rain that drops on my tongue and makes me sad. I think I kinda like the taste of where the wind blows. Cyclops. Coming to a town near you. Rising like the sun when the morning come I get up to get God's work done I'm quoting scripture with a serpent's tongue To save your soul I lead you to the water, wash away your sin St. Peter at the gate there to let you in Your destination heaven where your soul can go To begin again is mine so say the Lord have you more faith than your soul can afford as the darkness surrounds feel the weight of the fall 